I'm going to start with um, a sketch um, that had um, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be utilizing today as actually drawings, right, that, uh, that are scanned into the computer um, that I've utilized, that I've um, actually made in my sketchbook or on, you know, Xerox copy paper and just um, sort of out and about stuff that I'm, that's in my head. Um, so I'm going to start with this here fellow. It's uh, sort of like a sh sugar skull inspired um, Day of the Dead type of Christmas, Christmassy kind of ornament, holiday type of ornament. Um, so what I'm going to first start by doing is I'm going to auto select. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm actually going to get rid of the, going to get rid of some smudge, smudgy stuff, stuff that you guys can't really see, but I know that there's all kinds of garbage out here that's just, um, you know, from being on the scanner bed or just the, the texture of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the last suit tool and grab the, move my little uh, webinar tools out of the way. So the polygonal lasso tool. Um, I like this one a lot because I can just sort of click around at will, and um, I'm actually utilizing the lasso tool. And when you when you let go, boom, it starts and it sort of uh, links up a um, a lasso selection for you. But you can get these sort of like hard choppy edges, which I kind of like. So. I'm just going to deselect that. I was just showing you guys how that goes, how that works. So Command D is deselect. Get where um, I do utilize you utilize a lot of keyboard um, shortcuts, um, but I'll try to my best to remember to tell you guys where they exist. Um, anything to do with the select um, tools, I'll also go live up into the select menu. Um, okay, so let's start over here. Click and click. Yeah, get the heck here. <laughs> right. Must have just. Lifted my tool just a little bit too much. Okay. I'm not being real precise about it because all I'm really doing is um, I'm utilizing this to um, get rid of the junk that's around the edges that I do not want. Okay. Don't take too long to buzz around up here. Boom, boom. And when I'm done, you're sort of left with this sort of hanging business. If you hit the return key actually locks it up for you. Now, if there's areas that you don't want, which I'm actually just going to scroll this up a little bit, um, I'll jump into full screen mode in, in a little bit, but um, right at the moment I didn't want that. Um, if there's areas you don't want, you can always go back in with your, um, with, you can go back in with the polygonal lasso tool, or for this one I'm going to go with the regular lasso, and holding down the option key um, actually allows me to deselect. Oh, no. There it is. Okay. I thought I lost my whole selection. Um, okay. You can sort of um, chop hunks out, which is kind of nice. So go get rid of a little bit more of that. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfect because all I'm going to do is go ahead up here in the select menu and invert, which is command I, and delete. And when I do that, granted, I know you guys didn't see anything happen, but trust me, stuff happened. Uh, and we'll, you'll see that in a moment, um, evidence of that. So let me go, to, go ahead and use the dropper tool at this point. Let's select my background. And then I'm going to go up to the Select menu, down to Auto Select. And I'm going to, instead of utilizing the image luminance, which is what it comes up as a standard default, I'm going to drop that down to Current Color. I'm going to invert it. So it's going to select every single thing that's on this screen other than the, um, the white background. And now I can see this sort of get, get your marching ants around everything. Um, so once I've done that, um, I'm also then going to make a new layer here my layers palette. Um, once I make my new layer, um, I'm going to go ahead and select a color, and I've got some colors up here I know that I want to utilize. So um, let's grab my sample color. I know I want uh, this red color, actually. So got red chosen, and I'm going to go ahead and fill, which is Command F, and it's going to say with the current color. I'm like, yep, sure. You see all this garbage that's sort of hanging around the sides? That's what I'm going to try to go back in and get rid of that here in a moment. Um, now you guys can actually see some evidence of the uh, of the, of what I've actually chopped away. I just didn't want to have to deal with it all, um, so the less less is better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect at the moment because it it has served my purpose at this point. Um, I'm now going to jump down to the magic wand tool, and I'm going to select just some sort of random areas, and go ahead and delete. Um, I'm purposely not. Um, I'm checking the contiguous box, which is um, this guy up here. Um, if I did, if I unchecked this, when I select this sort of like, um, I call it sh you know, schmutz and pinky stuff hanging around on the edges there, um, it would grab all this stuff inside the closed paths of my drawing. Um, I do not want that. I want that stuff to remain. So I really just am concerned with some of the stuff that's hanging around on the edges. Uh, 
So that's looking pretty good to me. Um, I actually don't really mind any of the stuff. Yeah. Um, some attendees are wondering if it's possible to turn up your volume a little bit. Oh, sure. Let's see. See if that helps. Does that does that help? Maybe? I could speak up too. I, it's it's sounding good to me. I'm just going to wait to see if there's some feedback. Sure. Okay. Um, I just cranked up my volume on my screen as much, so hopefully that helps out. Uh, um, okay. So now that I've got uh, I've got the sort of the, the gist of the the sort of um, scanned stuff on an engineering web college, just sort of extra stuff that I did not want um, out of the way. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and do another auto select. So go back to the dropper tool. Auto select, select menu, auto select, and it should go right back to current color invert because that's what we last used, what I last used. I'm going to say OK, and with this one, this one I'm going to, I'm all, I always like to save my selections when I've got something that I'm happy with, so I'm just going to title this um, see Sugar Skull, right, and say fine. So that's there for later should I need to go back to it, um, but really the purpose I want now is I'm going to go ahead and make two more layers. I'm um, going to make so layer two and three, and I'm going to fill them each with a uh, with a color. So I'm going to choose this yellow, yellowy sort of orange color, and Command F, and I can see that yep, that's what's going to happen in that color space. Great. Um, so that's layer three. I might as well name it while I'm here. So orange, orange, right? Um, and I'm just going to close the eyeball on that for a moment just so I can see what I'm doing. I still have my selection made. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and choose this pink um, color. And again, Command F. And I can see that, yep, that's my, that's my pink that's going to fill. Great. Perfect. Um, might as well name that one while I'm there. Pink. It's really a good idea to be very cognizant of naming your layers because, trust you me, it's pretty easy to let this get out of hand. And then you have, you have like 27 layers of, that are all just numbers, and you have no idea what's what. Um, so this was my red one. That's right. Perfect. All right. So at this stage, I can actually deselect, which is either Command-D or up under the Select menu, None. See? So there's always a couple places to make things happen. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to shift these around. Um, my work relies a lot on um, sort of like accidents and in, in, imperfections. Um, and controlling those things. And uh, the work that I'm going to be making today is somewhat inspired by screen printing um, techniques, which um, I have a fair amount of experience with. Uh, all through college, I worked as a screen printer, and so I really like that, that kind of effect. Um, so I'm just going to so like have the offset printing things that aren't registered effect going on. Um, I'm actually going to move my red right up to the top because I know I want that one up to the top. And I'm going to move my orange one. I'm holding down my shift key and clicking with my arrow keys on my keyboard um, in order to make, make these shifts happen. Um, so I'm just going to shift it over a little bit more maybe. Yeah, that's probably about good. Maybe I'll go adjust the pink one just a nudge. And this, maybe the orange one can actually go down. Let's see. Okay. Um, all right, that kind of makes me happy. Um, the black is still there, but I'm not worried about that because I'm not going to utilize that. So at this point, I'm going to select all of my layers over my layers palette. I just got them all to select because I was already had the red one selected. And so when I held down the shift key and clicked the pink, they all, they all grabbed and all selected. I go here, I'm going to group the layers and name the group. And that's my sugar skull, sugar skull layers. And I'm going to do a select all, Command A and Command C and Command N for a new file, which is going to be um, holiday, holiday, oops, holiday. Perfect. And it's already set to 9 by 12, which is the size that I wanted at 220 dpi, or pixels per inch within Painter. Um, it's all the same thing. And go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to go Command V for paste. Um, and so now I've got that in a place where I can sort of move it around as I need. Uh, and at that point I'm just going to go ahead and save that as well. 
always a good idea to save, save, save. I say it all the time to my students in my class. Save, save, save. You just never know. Um, all right. So uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm now done with this portion of the image. Um, so I can actually, I can just close it out as is, but it's probably a good idea to actually save it um, so I don't have to redo the work all the time. So I'll save this one, save this one out. And let's see. Multi. It'll just give me just a little brain clue that I'll know that there are multiple um, images on there. Okay, great. Save that out. I can close it out. I no longer need it. Um, okay, the next part of the file that I'm going to go ahead and need is another image that has, comes from the sketchbook. Let's see. This guy here. Um, and just in the interest of time, uh, I went ahead and and took care of the coloring of this fellow, just so I wouldn't have to um, you know waste you guys, waste everyone's time watching watching that part happen, because um, you'll get the coloring and the painting part later. So very much like the last sugar skull image, um, this image is I'm looking at, at, at similar themes, similar topics, um, like Day of the Dead, uh, Lucha Libres, uh, and so this comes from again from a sketchbook. Um, so I came in and then, uh, then I went ahead and I did some painting on that. And, and really the painting involved um, using the paint bucket tool and click fill colors. <laughs> um, not real elaborate. Okay, but uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go and grab the magic wand tool and make sure that I have the correct layer selected, which is, um, no, they're not named, uh, but this one here is, uh, I can see in my little color swatch here, little swatches, that there's, uh, that there's color there. So I'm going to select that, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do again is uh, invert. So I make sure that I'm getting um, everything but that. It should have worked. Let's see. And C. No, we'll do it again. Oops. Double click that. That happens sometimes. Perfect. Um, so it showed up, but it didn't actually get everything I want. So I did definitely want it to have this. Uh, I can see that I can see through my tree. Um, so let's try it one more time. If I don't get exactly what I want, that's okay. Uh, I'll move on to it another way. Let me work this way. So I'm just going to deselect that. Magic wand tool. Cool. Invert. Selection. And now I can grab it. Command C. Darn it. Must be, I must be uh, double clicking my screen too fast. Um, all right. So I'm going to get rid of this guy. And Command V is paste. I can drop him in here. So that'll do a trick. It'll make, it'll, we'll make do with that one. Um, okay, so for all intents and purposes, I don't need that one either, so I can go out of the way. Um, and for a moment, I will actually fill the screen and make this a little bit larger. That's Command M, um, actually makes your screen larger. Because um, so, what I'm going to do is play around a little bit with the composition of these two elements together before I go ahead and start um, thinking about adding other elements. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to first do with this guy here is I'm going to change his, I'm going to name his layer, that's number one. <laughs> Um, let's see, tree one, I'll just name it. This is going to be multiples. Um, I'm also going to go up to the edit menu, down to transform, and I'm going to scale that. <clears throat> I'm going to scale that down to maybe 80% or so. Um, that ought to be about right. I'm going to say OK. And once that's done, that automatically put me into the transform tools. That, so you can notice my toolbar up the top here changed. Um, I'm not going to do any other transformations for, to this image, but we could. We could skew it and make um, perspective distortions, and we can rotate it, and all sorts of fun things. Um, but anytime you make a transformation, uh, you're going to end up with this bounding box around it, which um, you need to then commit to that transformation or cancel it before you move forward. Um, I'm happy with that. I know that I want it at 80%. Um, let's say I hit the little checkbox, and the bounding box goes away, and I'm left with an image that I can now move around um, at will. So uh, as I said, I'm sort of going for this um, screen printed, sort of like offset, misregistered type of, type of image. Um, so I'm going to um, go ahead and hold down my option key. Notice that my cursor changes. Um, I've got the move tool selected, or the layer adjusted layer adjuster tool, um, and or I just call it black arrow tool. <laughs> uh, if I click and pull and click and pull again, um, I can get multiples 
and I mean, I'll click and pull one more time, and it just pulls off duplicates. It does give me, if I go over to my layers palette, um, a whole bunch of layer ones. So this is where it can start to get confusing if you're not um, if you're not really um, good about naming your layers. So this is going to kind of matter here in a moment. So I am going to go back and readjust these names in a sec. So but I just want to adjust kind of like where I would like these things to live. So that one I'd like there. Let's see. And this one I want to come down and have its own space a bit. Maybe come up. It cropped off a nudge. Come up into this one. Keith, I have a, a question from Susan, and she's wondering if you can give her any advice on how to import a photo from your camera to the canvas. Oh, sure. Um, I mean, I, I bring, I import all of my photos into um, iPhoto. It's just sort of, you know, the default place where it works on my Mac. Um, and then from there, uh, go up to the file menu. Let's see, you could... Uh, Oops. I can't acquire an image. We could place an image, perhaps. Um, probably go right down to, so here's my photos. Hope nothing embarrassing pops up. <laughs> can't imagine, but uh, it's going to load up all of my iPhoto images. And so I could grab any one of these images, right, and, and, then, um, and then place it. So let me go back up here. Let's grab something. Sure. And say, does you want to convert the document to the working color profile? Sure, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, and choose where I want to put it. And that was 100%. So that just grabbed it right direct from, uh, right direct from iPhoto. So that's one way. Um, you could also go about the way that essentially any of the files that I've opened thus far today um, could have been files from iPhoto, or they could have just actually been photos. Um, a lot of times people scan old photographs that are not digital photographs. Um, and so you could think of uh, the sketches that I've actually scanned in could just be, be just like that. You could copy and paste them or take hunks of it. Um, hopefully that helps Susan out. Um, okay, so uh, just sort of playing with the uh, adjustment of like where I wanted things to play. I wanted this repetition to happen. Um, the other thing I want to happen between these two, I'd like to have, um, I'd like to see more overlapping. I'd like to see like a gel effect happening. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one to the top. Let's see. I had to play around with the, um, the closing of which one's which. All right, so this one is the bottom one. So bottom tree. Okay, because that's if I close the eyeball up and down, I can see that he's down here on the bottom. Uh, then this guy, he's the, this is going to be the overlapped one. Overlap bottom. Okay. And this guy, that's the top. So that's definitely going to one top tree. Okay. And then clearly this must be the last one left. And that's the only one that's sort of left um, unobstructed. So whole tree. Whole tree. Okay. Um, perfect. So now I want the, uh, I want, as I said, the overlapped one. I want actually to be at the top, and I'm going to change its composite method to gel, and I can see the um, overlapping effect. Do you see how, what just happened there? If I go from default, watch what's happening in this area. Um, you can see it looks like now the ink, the, it didn't really change the color per se, but it does change the opacity um, of it, so now it looks like um, if you overprint inks on top of each other, um, especially transparent process inks, um, you will get this overlapping effect. So that's, the, that's what I wanted to have happen. Um, now, I could leave that just like this if I was going to leave my background white, which I'm not. Um, so I need to go ahead <clears throat> and, um, and actually make, make some uh, adjustments to that. Um, but before I do so, I actually just want to move, I realize I want to move these guys up just a to, just to touch. And then if I go ahead and group all these things, oops, sorry about that, um, group all these things, all these tree layers. Now I can move them um, as I as I see fit as one whole unit. Um, and what I'm watching, what I'm looking at is compositionally. I'm, I'm looking to have some overlap happen here because I know, like later on in the piece, um, I want to make sure that uh, there is not uh, some of this like ocean of negative space. I'm trying to create multiple negative shapes. So I have a negative space here. I have a number of them happening in here. One over here. Um, I can move this guy over even little bit 
so he's not quite so cut off. And maybe these guys can go over just a nudge. Um, and it's all about just sort of looking and sort of figuring out what works for you. Um, we could, uh, could talk about like thing like the rule of thirds, um, where if I turn on and enable the grid down here in the bottom, um, I can see that I have some, you want, whenever you're thinking about taking a photograph or creating an image, um, you want to think of your image in thirds. And that's what, that's what this sort of grid is actually showing us. Um, hopefully, you know, if you, if you sort of can work this into your methodology of, of working and taking photographs, that this becomes as intuitive as like breathing. Like you didn't think about the fact that you just took a breath and just did. Um, but I, you want major elements to be taking place in, um, at junction points. So I've got that happening here and here, um, and, and I wanted some empty negative space, which is happening down in this quadrant. So I'm just going to turn that off to get out of my way. But, uh, but I do want some things overlapping, right, like sp life overlaps. So um, great. I seem to be happy with that. Now I'm going to go back to, and I'm going to name these guys. These are my um, distressed trees. Distress. Oops. Distress. Okay, um, I'm going to open them back up because I still have some work to do on this guy here. Um, as I was saying earlier about the, the gel um, function, if I was going to leave my, uh, my background white, this would be fine. I could be call it a day, I'm done. But I know I'm going to add color behind these guys, um, and I don't want the color showing up behind them. Um, so I want to control that, that effect. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, this is my, that's my bottom one. So the one that's above which is not that one. Here's my above guy, top tree. Okay, bring him down below there. You can adjust the hierarchy of your, um, of your layers, um, even when they're in groups, which is what I was doing over here, just sort of line things up the way I wanted them. Um, so that's top tree, uh, and oh yeah, this one needs to be here, right? <clears throat> okay, there we go. So the overlap bottom is this one. I know it seems like I'm <laughs> being nuts about this, but you need to, uh, it's like you have to sort of figure it out. Um, okay, top tree. Magic wand, and I'm going to select the white of my background, and you can see it's selecting everything um, but that tree, and and that's that's important because I'm going to go ahead and invert that as well, and then on the tree that does overlap, the overlap bottom tree, this guy here, I'm going to Command C, just copy it, and then I'm going to delete it, okay? So that that overlapping stuff actually went away, and I can see that it went away um, if I close this eyeball on this one. See the whole top half of my tree's gone. Um, that's okay. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna put it back here um, because if Command V actually pastes right in place. So edit, all right, and Command V paste in place. Boom! It went right back to where I had it, and now it's a whole new layer, and I can actually change that section to be a gel. Now the last part is I'm gonna use my Command key on my keyboard to select the um, the that layer as well as the top tree and I'm going to collapse those two into one. So now I've left, what I'm left with is what appears to be a gelled chunk of that bottom tree, okay, that lives below there. But when I act, but it's actually set as a default layer, the composite method, that's what these are called, composite methods are set to a default layer, so it's totally opaque. So when I go to put color behind these trees here in a, in a few moments, um, you won't see the color behind it. you see the color in the white, you won't see the color behind the green. Um, which is what I was going for. So just rename that top tree, top tree. Great. Um, <clears throat> you know, as far as naming goes, you figure out what works best as far as the naming methodology for your own self. Uh, just something that will like clue your head into uh, what it is that you're trying to do. Great. So now we've got some sort of the major elements of the piece in place. Um, let's see. So now, now I'm going to actually go ahead and kind of jump out of full screen, which is Command M to jump back out of that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clone this. Now, there's lots of different reasons to use clones. Um, the reason I'm using a clone today, um, if you look immediately to the, uh, to the layers palette, you'll see no longer do I have any layers, no groups, or anything. So essentially what the clone does is it's like if you stand directly above your image and take a photograph, it actually flattens everything out. Um, and the reason I did that is because I actually want to fill the white background um, with a solid color, and I'm going to bring that solid color back to the, to the original um, holiday image piece here in a moment. So I have to utilize clones in my work um, 
just as sort of as a as a quick tr tool to sort of help myself get to something that I can bring back to the original image, and ultimately I'll just discard this image. Uh, okay, so color. Let's see. I would like maybe this kind of blue turquoisey kind of blue color, and I'm just going to take my paint bucket and fill it in, and see what I like, see how it happens. Sure, that's kind of nice, um, and you can see that overlap caused. Um, cause there to be some negative shapes and negative space that's going on up here, um, which I could fill or not. Um, I might go with it. I might go with it filled. Um, that looks kind of nice. And uh, at this point, I'm going to utilize the magic wand tool, and I'm going to go ahead and select the, uh, the blue of the background. And again, the contiguous box is off, so I need to hold down my shift key to, um, to actually get the rest of the blue. And now I've, now I've got that. And again, to copy it, it's Command-C. Go over here, back into full screen, and Command-V. Ought to paste that right down on top. I'm not particularly concerned that it is not right in place. Um, and it's actually better if it's not. <laughs> I think it all sort of flows into that um, sort of misregistered offset um, type of printing. So fill the background, um, and I'm actually going to then, I'm going to, in a minute here, I'm going to make a second one. But let's drag this one below all of these guys. Oops. Oops. I, dropped it right, I think I dropped it right on top of my, my sugar skulls. Sometimes, ah! <laughs> Let me pull this up. There we go. Just a Command-Z dropped it right out of there. I'll close that. Okay. Um, the other place, if you have trouble getting, you know, uh, making this stuff work for you, as long as you have the proper layer selected, um, you can actually utilize these features right up over here. And if you hold your cursor over any of these tools, you get what's called tool tips. Um, that's that little yellow box that's the pop up. So um, actually, want to move that? Uh, let's see, below. Let's put that one below. Uh, great. And this guy looks like he's still set to gel. And I know they set to gel because I can see this overlapping of color here. So I want to go ahead and change him back to default. Um, so that's the kind of stuff. I mean, like that that'd be easy to miss. And and honestly, with my own work, if I miss that, eh, no biggie. But Keith, um, I, yeah. Would you be able to zoom in where you have the gel effect, just so that we can see that up close? Oh sure. Yep. You bet. Um, Spacebar, by the way, quickly gets you to your pan tool, so you can uh, you can move the or the grabber, is what it's called. Um, in here, you can sort of move stuff around, um, so you can see the gel um, actually happening. So if I turn that guy off, let's see, turn this guy on, turn this guy off. Okay, you can see I can see the trace of that tree still existing in here, and that's from that section that I went ahead and um, collapsed. Um, hopefully that helps that individual out who wanted to see that. Um, yeah, sure, sorry, I was uh, working on the overall composition and so I was not, was not totally zoomed in. No, that's great, thank you. So, yeah, you bet. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we're moving right along. Uh, I'm going to close up my, 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 my layers there, uh, my group layers. Okay, so this is going to be my solid back, solid color. Um, I'm going to make another one of these, which I can go up, up down to the uh, duplicate layer. Oh. Um, and this one, I'm going to move up a bit. Let's see. Okay. Okay. This up here. Perfect. And this guy, I think, let's see, if I put him down to let me make this a colorized layer, um, I really like to play with the, um, the composite methods to see what happens. Um, and so I do, I do actually kind of like this effect of what's going to happen here. If I bring this, let's say, I don't want it below that. Right, let's take him. Let's move him down. So not to the bottom, just down one layer. So that goes below the, it goes below these guys, but still above this guy. Um, and you see what's happening to that? If I if I close the eyeball off, um, 
when I turn that on, watch what's happening around the outer edge here of this, um, of this sort of ochre orange color. Um, when I turn that on, um, the blues change. It changes to a shade of blue. So it just adds another element of, of that sort of like overlapping, misregistered um, effect. Um, and playing around in here and seeing what happens, it can be kind of fun. Um, overlay might be neat, hard lights, who knows. You just sort of never know what's going to happen. You have an idea, um, but um, it's fun to just sort of play around. So the colorize uh, is kind of making me happy at the moment because I still, for the most part, are retaining my, my same blue that I, had, that I had chosen earlier. But I'm getting this little bit of like misregistered um, extra stuff here, of extra fun um, that I think that it's working out there. Um, okay. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually color in this tree that this, um, this fellow is holding. And so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for that one. And again with the um, space bar, grab me the, get me my grabber tool. Uh, move them over more towards the center of my image. And for this, I'm going to go and um, go back to the polygonal lasso tool. So you get that by holding down the um, regular lasso tool, and it should pop up. Any of these tools over here in the toolbox, if, for those of you who haven't figured this part out yet, um, if it has a little sort of a downward black arrow in the bottom right-hand corner, that means there's other stuff underneath there for you to hold down and get a hold of. Um, okay, so all my layers are, are, uh, are named, Oops, except for this one. So this is the colorized, colorized back. And I'm going to create one new layer, and I'm actually going to do it um, above everything. So click that. New layers are made above um, whatever layer you have selected. So not always do I remember to sort of pay attention to that, but when I do, it's you know, just one, one step that you don't have to deal with later on. Um, so this is going to be called my um, colored tree, let's see, or green tree. Um, okay, so the polygon lasso tool. So here we are back here. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and start clicking on this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because I know that I'm going to go back in later and adjust the stuff I don't like. Right. Just uh, at some point, I have to go in and adjust my uh, my pressure sensitivity settings I, uh, for for my tablet. I think that that's the the issue is why it's um, jumping around on me. Okay. I do like the, um, the sort of cut hard edges um, of this tool. Perfect. Almost there. And right at the top. Great. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and, and um, take some sections out. And I do want more of an organic shape for this one. So I'm going to go to this, the regular lasso tool. And same tools I used earlier uh, by holding down the option key. I can go in and take sections out of that, uh, of the selection I've already made, so I can sort of minus parts of it out. Okay. Oh, no, did I just lose the whole thing? Oh, darn. All right. Try this. Keep the reselect. Nope. Sorry, folks. I'll be quick about this. My finger bumped my tablet. All righty. One, two, three, four. Ugh. I know. It's probably mildly painful to watch. I get it. <laughs> Keith, what kind of tablet are you using? Sure. Um, it's an Intuos 4 um, large. And at the moment, I'm just using the regular pen uh, stylus, rather, that comes with your tablet. Um, but in a moment, I'm going to go and switch to the uh, airbrush stylus. Um, Thank you. Sure, you bet. Okay. Let's jump up full screen here for a moment. That's part of my part of my issue. I think I can't see what's going on. All right. So again, I'm going to go ahead and quickly minus some of these sections out. And you haven't already sort of figured out, <laughs> given the nature of the kind of work I make, it doesn't really matter how precise it is. Um, I kind of like that happenstance. All right. I think I got them all. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm going to save that selection. 
Save selection. Tree. Perfect. Um, and for this tool, for this for this section here, I've got my new layer, my new layer over here already made. Um, I'm going to go ahead and utilize the uh, <clears throat> the furry brush, which I already had selected, um, and that exists under Effects Furry Brush. And so, choose my furry brush, and I want a green. So I'm going to choose that green, and I see that that's been selected over my color palette. And I want a large size for this. So I'm um, looking. It's already set just from when I was playing around with it before. Um, it's pretty big, like 253-ish. That's not precise. It could be 256. It could be 240, and it would probably still work. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw just one continual stroke into this, um, into this painting here. Okay. And slowly but surely, it'll actually, I'm just sort of taking my time to sort of stroke all the way up. Um, and now I've, I've stopped painting, and I'm just allowing um, the processor to sort of finish up. Um, and it takes a bit of a time because of the size of the brush that I had selected. Um, but when it gets all the way up to the top, I think it kind of has a cool effect, and it has this, like, furry tree type of effect um, that's going on in, going on in there. And it sort of, like, left me some, uh, left me some, some fun things for my, for my hearts, my heart-shaped ornaments. Um, at that point, I can actually deselect because I'm done with that section. Um, and maybe I'll jump back into full screen mode here for a sec. So now I can see that I'm carrying the green from this area over into this part of the um, part of the image. And I think I might actually jump down into my sugar spell layers. And I'm going to see what it looks like if I drop the orange below the pink. Um, I can do that just by um, moving this down one layer. So now all of a sudden my ornaments are pink instead of orange. So it's just a sort of a personal preference, but I think that the pink against the orange um, is actually working a little bit nicer. Um, and again, so it's the benefit of working in layers, the benefit of um, naming your layers and knowing exactly right where you can go. Like, oh, I want to fix this issue. And it's like, boom, you can go right to it. It's, um, it's really, really, really nice and um, effective and efficient. Uh, okay. So... Um, I'm good with this part. The next step, um, I can actually sort of jump out of, uh, I'll zoom out just a nudge here. Oops. Sorry. Um, zoom out just a little bit. So this is what we have going so far. Um, and out of full screen, I'm going to open up one more file. Open up. Uh, all right. Get back to where I heard my stuff going on. Corel webinar. And my Corel snowflakes. <coughs> So I took the liberty of grabbing the Corel logo. Um, then I'm going to just build this into a brush. I'm going to build it into a nozzle to be able to like spray out snowflakes um, to start start to finish fill start to fill in my background. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to utilize the image hose to do that. Um, I did already go in here and name these these layers. I didn't name all the snowflakes. That was just seemed a little redundant to me. But um, I have a big Corel, a medium Corel, and a little Corel. These are all these guys here. I can move around. Um, and I'm only going to utilize one of them in there. So I think I'm going to go with the start here, down at the bottom. And no, not that. I'm going to go all the way up to my, all these 1 through 10, uh, layers 1 through 10 or 14, all these non-labeled layers um, are all snowflakes. Um, so holding down the shift key, <coughs> um, and they were just uh, snowflakes that were built uh, with the vector tools um, elsewhere um, that I brought in. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the medium Corel logo, and I'm going to group those things right here, group layers, command G. Um, and then once that's done, under my nozzle libraries, I can actually go up here and, uh, and say make nozzle from group. Um, if I make the nozzle from group, it puts it into this grid format. And at this point, you need to, need to actually save this file out. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we'll give it a title, um, say, Corel Snow. Oops, Corel Snow. Cool. And save that out. Um, what's kind of cool about this is it, it allows you to, these will all now be um, bits of, of the brush that we can paint with. So essentially, if you can, like, make it look like it's snowing and paint with the snow. Um, it's pretty fun stuff. 
Oops, all right, so that's saving that out. It was kind of a big file. It was like a, all those snowflakes were huge. They're all at least three or four inches in, in total. Uh, all right, close this out. Um, and I don't actually need this either either. Okay, um, so now I can, I'm back here to my original file, and I can go ahead to load the nozzle, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and find the nozzle I just built, which is this Corel Snow one right here, and say okay. And you don't immediately see anything happen, but if I, I'm going to go up and choose the, um, um, a, spray, a spray nozzle, which is listed under the um, image hose, and I'm just using the last one in there, spray size W. Okay. Oops, sorry. Perfect. Okay, come back up. Um, jump back into full screen mode. And at this point, I'm, I am going to switch my tools. So I'm putting my um, regular stylus down. I'm going to go to the um, Intuos airbrush tool. Um, <clears throat> and what I, uh, the, one of the, the reason I like the um, Intuos airbrush stylus is because it allows you to, um, to control very, any number of functions, but specifically the function that I like it for is to be able to control the jitter on my brush. So I have the wheel um, that is on top of, you know, if at some point you guys go to the um, Wacom website and see, it, see what this airbrush looks like, um, there's a wheel on the very top of it, which you can, you can push forward and backwards, which allows you to um, scatter or jitter your, uh, your, your image. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer because I do not want to paint on my, uh, my background. Um, but before I make my new layer, I actually need to make a uh, system my solid background. I'm going to do my auto select trick again here. So auto select, choosing the white because I know because it, it, it looks like I have a whole lot of things to choose from, but really all I'm trying to grab is the chunks of blue that we see here. So I'm going to choose the white, auto select. Still, it still remembers from before, so I'm going to color, color invert and should grab all of the blue of my background, which is exactly what I wanted. And I'm going to go ahead and save that selection because I'm probably going to bring that up again. So this will be blue back. Perfect. Um, great. So now that that's done, um, did I make a new layer yet? No, I didn't make a new layer. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to make a new layer above that. So I, this one I can start painting on. So this might be like blue snow. Um, I'll probably make a total of two or three different um, snow layers to sort of build in, build in the effect that I want. Um, and so the first one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my paintbrush tool. Okay. And <clears throat> the, um, the change your size, you can adjust sizes over here on this slider. Um, but also the um, option and command keys held down at the same time will allow you to get this, uh, get that same effect going. And that's this um, circle that you might see showing up in here. Uh, I have mine set to the legacy um, scaling version, so it doesn't look as it does um, out of the box in, in Painter 12. Uh, all right, so I've got that blue chosen. I'm going to choose a lighter, a lighter blue to start painting with. And I've got my nozzle chosen. And it doesn't look like I've got anything going on because I'm, I'm actually going to delete this stuff in a minute. But um, what I want to demonstrate is, get rid of that, get rid of that stuff. If I have my, the wheel on my airbrush tool pushed all the way forward, I only get this straight line. As I start to pull that wheel back, it starts to spread the brush out. Okay, and we can sort of see the, um, the little snowflakes start to sh shoot out. The more I spread that out, the more the more I pull that wheel back, rather, the more um, this jitter is being affected. But nothing actually changes. So um, you don't actually need uh, this this brush per se. I mean, you can do it without having this brush. Um, it just is a matter of you'd have to go up here and adjust the jitter to each stage of of spray that you want to have happen. Um, so. It's a nice, it's a handy tool if it's something that you would utilize often, um, which in my own work I do, so it's, it's, worth, uh, it's worth having. Um, so I do want my brush to be a little bigger, so I'm going to blow that up just a nudge. And I'm just going to start, literally start painting that, these snowflakes in and around. And I don't mind that some, some areas are going to get obliterated, like that's totally, totally acceptable. Um, 
change the size again. So again, that's command and option. I can make it really big and it'll make some really large snowflakes. <clears throat> um, and at this point, I don't really, it doesn't really matter much to me what how much of each snowflake or how much of the Crow logo is showing. I just want it to, um, I want it to fill in color. So I'm going to add multiple colors here, multiple layers, so you'll have a real, like, a depth of field happening in this space. Um, okay, so I've got, got blue snow happening. Um, and that's kind of fun sometimes to see, like, well, what happens if I put that on gel layer? Here? Well, maybe that's too dark. Or what happens if I put it on colorize? Nothing. <laughs> uh, so you sort of never know, like, what's going to happen if, unless you um, start playing around and you're just willing to, to sort of take those, take those creative risks. And sometimes you get some really nice things to happen. Um, so I actually kind of like the overlay effect. So maybe I'll leave that one for a moment. Um, okay, so I'm going to make um, another new layer at this point. And in this one, I'm going to change up my color. I'm actually going to paint with white. And, uh, oh, incidentally, I should mention that... Uh, another important feature of utilizing the nozzle and getting color to happen is that the grain on your brush has to be adjusted down to zero. Um, if I had this up at full 100%, um, I'll just show you what will happen. Let's see. Should be painting in those. Pull this way back. It's painting in all the colors that were in the original file, um, which could be kind of nice because I did happen to choose blues and and um, and light colors and whatnot. So it's getting kind of a nice effect already just by having the original colors there. But if I put it to full grain, what full grain is, is it obliterates any color um, that was existing in the file where you made your nozzles from. So if you guys remember that file that had all the snowflakes and the crow logos on it, they were all different colors. So it would pull all those colors in. If they were red and pink and yellow, it would be red and pink and yellow I'd be painting right now. But if you adjust the grain down to zero, um, you're able to actually pull from a color that you choose within your color palette, whether it be white, purple, yellow, green, doesn't matter. Um, so this one, I'll name this one again too. So this will be maybe multi-color snow. And I might make, make one more. And this one I want to be white. Uh, so I'm going to go over here. So choose white and start. Oops, that's right. It has to be the background color. Swap those around. Boom. Okay. Now, so I'm going to work with my background color. Again, I'm going to make my. So I'm going to make about this size. I'll start coloring some areas in. So dot in some smaller flakes. And I'm going to make some larger ones. Um, there's fairly elaborate ways in which you can go in and adjust how. Your, um, your brush will actually, will actually work. You can go in and change um, all sorts of stuff, um, the bearing, the, the rotation, the tilt, the velocity, um, and that's all within the brush controls. A little bit more extensive than uh, I wanted to get in in our hour-long webinar, but, um, but enough for you guys to sort of get the, get the gist of what's happening. But you can see the sort of the effects of like now starting to adjust my opacity down a little bit there's a real depth of field starting to happen in this space. Um, I think um, I'm going to make one more after this. So this will be screened, screen snow, screen snow, and one more in total white. Uh, that be ought to be good. And so that one, let's see, I'll leave that as is. I'm not sure I'm on my default. Make sure I have white selected as my background color. And I've got my wheel pulled back on my um, on my stylus. And I can start painting those painting those in. I just wanted to get some. If there's ones that don't that show up that you don't like, I just uh, have my fingers poised on Command Z, which is undo, and I just undo the snowflakes that show up that I'm not really happy with. <laughs> and I I go back and so just I'm making very small strokes. Um, so like one part of an EL showed up there I wasn't happy with. Uh, let's see. Make them a little bit smaller. Some small stuff. Go back in the distance. Make a larger one. That's kind of nice. I didn't like those that showed up. And just about. Kind of want some more white space. More white stuff happening up in this area. It's sort of balance out the chunk of white that's here. But you know, you can always change. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe I drop this one down a little bit. 
So if I go here, move tool, and move it down just one layer. Now the white is behind some of the screening. It's just sort of a constant playing with um, how that effect is showing up for you. So I'll name this one just to be, be a good layer name in Doobie. <laughs> um, white snow. Okay. And the, um, I'm thinking I can deselect that now. That's Command D. Um, and if I sit back, I'm pretty happy with how this is, how this is just about there. Um, I think the last thing I'll probably do is go ahead and show you guys how to tilt up your screen and sign it. So go up to the green tree, and I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm just going to title this my signature. signature. And a um, tool I really like for that, we use any number of things, but I'm particularly fond of the um, scratch board tool, which lives under pens. Show you guys so pens, and all the way kind of alphabetically located down towards the bottom, scratch board tool. <clears throat> and I'm going to go with the rotate page uh, tool here, and I actually can you can actually turn your whole image, um, which is awfully nice when you're drawing. Um, and then the grabber tool again, which is the space bar, uh, I can move that up. And then I want to select a color, so I'm going to go back to here my paintbrush, select a color. Um, I don't know, probably is darker blue, and maybe I'll go to the color mixer and just drag it down just a inch. And Go in here and start to see if that's about right. Yeah, about right. And all done. Um, the last thing you can do, rotate tool, double click it, put it right back in space. Um, <clears throat> it's nice, your signature, you know, you're not committed to it. Like, if you don't like it, you can move it out of the way, or you can move it around. Be like, oh, I wish it had been down a little bit lower over here. I wish it had been a little bit smaller. Uh, so that would be if we wanted to do that, that would be under the transform tool. And once that pops up, it gives you that bounding box, remember, and shrink that down a nudge. There you go. Holding down my shift key, it does not change the, um, the proportions, so it keeps the proportions nice, makes it a little bit smaller. You can say OK on that. And I don't know, maybe I want to make it a gel so it shows up more, but not quite that much. Okay. That's good. All set. Done. Save. Command S. Um, and that pretty much concludes uh, what I wanted to run, to run through with you all today, sort of a start to finish step-by-step um, -step of how I would create uh, a piece of my work. So. Well, that, that was fabulous. Thank you so much. Now you have me in the holiday spirit, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> This well, should be our, our Corel Christmas card or holiday card. It's very nice. Isn't that fun? Yeah, thanks. So um, there are tons of great tips that you offered us today. So I just want everyone to know that this entire session has been recorded. I'll do a little bit of editing, and we'll have it posted up to our YouTube channel, which is YouTube forward slash painter tutorials by next week. And we'll also send a follow-up email to let you guys know um, exactly where this is located, give you a little reminder. But if anyone has any questions at this point, you've been fairly quiet throughout the webinar. Um, we can't open the phone lines, but you can enter questions into the Q&A panel if you have anything for us. And before we end the webinar, we'll be sure to address those questions. Sure, absolutely. We're getting lots of thank yous. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, everybody who, uh, who signed in and watched. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's fun to do. It's fun to share. You obviously had a very clear presentation because there are no questions coming in. That's a great thing. That's good. I did my job. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll give it just another, um, another minute or so to let people log their questions. You got it. They want more from you, Keith. <laughs> yeah, do they? That's nice. Well, we, we hope to have also a, a written tutorial from Keith that we'll be posting to our tutorial section of the Painter site. Mm -hmm. So you can check back there. Um, recently, we posted quite a few new tutorials. So if you haven't checked those out, be sure to visit the Tutorials tab of Corel.com forward slash painter. 
And I, I guess that's it, Keith. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the webinar. When I click the stop button, it's going to kick you guys all out. So last chance to enter a quick question. Thank you, everyone. And there's nothing in there. So thank you so much, Keith. And thank you to everyone that joined us today. Keep coming back for we'll have new webinars every third Tuesday of the month. Thanks again and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.